Hey there you guys, welcome back. Today we are going to plant some lithops seeds, living stones, uh, mimicry plants, um, I call them bums, <laughs> little gnome bums. They, they come up, they got like two big fat leaves that looks like little gnomes or garden gnomes are mooning you. So uh, many of you have seen uh, my video in the past where I've grown them from seed. I was successful uh, and and uh, I was doing really, really well, really well with lithops and then uh, Around the time that I moved, uh, things just went a little bit crazy. I put some stuff outside and some some mice or something got into them and uh, uh, maybe raccoons as well uh, tipped them over and, and everything fell in the pot and then there was like chunks out of them. So I just said, you know what, I'm done. I'm done for now and uh, I want to start growing them again. So um, anyway, I ordered from Silver Hill, Silver Hill Seeds uh, in South Africa and uh, they have an amazing selection of, uh, of succulents and, and native South American plants. So uh, they are really, really good quality. I've ordered from them in the past and uh, had really, really good success. It's a little bit pricey for me because uh, of the conversions, but uh, all in all, it's, it's a good value um, because sometimes you buy from eBay and, and they don't, you, you buy them and, and none of them grow or it's the wrong thing. They actually harvest the seed themselves, so uh, you get what you pay for. So anyway, I have three different var varieties of lithops, uh, a species mix, so i just done all around everything. I have uh, Acuempea, uh, I don't even know. Let's, let's show you. Is it going to come into focus? Let's put it under, under this camera. This camera might focus. Here, I think it is. So we got that one, and then we've got some Bromfieldi, or Bromfieldii, and uh, uh, Lampranthus maxil maximiliana. <laughs> this one isn't actually a lithops. I think it's in the mimic mimicry plant family. Um, the flower resembles that of an ice plant, but so does so does the lithops. Um, really kind of a daisy-like flower, but this one has like a a really vibrant red or a pink uh, flower, just beautiful. Maybe if I can find a photo, I'll put a photo up in the in the corner there. Um, but this one is going to take different care than the lithops. Uh, I'm using uh, I bought I don't know these are seven or eight inch uh, clay pots. I really I, I bought these seeds. They arrived a few weeks ago, and I just didn't know what I was going to plant them in. It's always a big thing because lithops they grow so slow that. Uh, I, I didn't want to put it in something that looks kind of crappy, um, like I did before. They were in like a little, um, uh, like a little salad container with the with the lid, and it worked really, really well. But uh, I didn't want to have that as a display outside. It just kind of looks a little like I didn't care so much. But uh, I, I love using that sort of stuff. But I know that it's going to be in that for a number of years. So I just wanted to go a little bit more mainstream. So uh, not knocking anybody that wants to reuse stuff. I think that that's fa fabulous, and I do it as well. Uh, if you see all my pots in the back, everything that I purchased in, uh, before, I, I save the pots and, and reuse them, even the... the uh, anyway, I'm rambling. Let's just get to it. So with lithops, I'll bring you down to this other camera. With lithops, you want to have a really, really well-draining soil. So in the bottom of these pots, because they're really, really big, it's, it's kind of overkill. <clears throat> but lithops actually have a taproot, from what I understand. So you want to give them a little bit of root space, which I did not give them the last time. I didn't give them that space that they wanted for the root system. Um, so I have just my regular Pro Mix, and it has perlite in it. It's a high porosity perlite so, or high porosity um, Pro Mix soil. So it's got uh, peat moss, which is probably not a great thing for for lithops, but because it's high porosity, it's got a really really fast draining rate so that should be fine and I mixed it with grow stone you've seen it before it's a uh, it's a recycled glass product um, not a sponsored video uh, I wish I wish they supplied this stuff this I bought this from Amazon and it it, it could be pricey but it, it's a big bag and it lasts me a long time I don't use it for everything but uh, if I want to aerate the soil um, it's a really really good product so this one um, it adds aeration, eliminates overwatering, and helps uh, and root rot. So it, it helps with with drainage, but the product itself actually absorbs some water. 
So it's it, it's not just it'll it'll help with wicking. If I water from the bottom, it, it will help bring the the water up. So yeah, and then uh, so that's what I put in the bottom. Just a mix of my high porosity soil and uh, uh, high porosity potting mix, and then the grow stone. I did about a 50-50 mix in here, and then for the the top couple of inches, I am using. Uh, the same mix, but I added an extra part of, uh, of uh, play sand. Really, if, if, if you can use a horticultural sand, that's much better. Can you see that up here? A horticultural sand is better. It's a, it's, a, it's a coarser grit, and that's really what I want to use. But in my area, it's hard to find horticultural sand or sharp sand, so um, I'm using play sand. Actually, with play sand, uh, it can actually stay more moist. It can stay wet a little bit longer, which is weird. Um, you would think that sand would dry really, really quickly. So anyway, I've, I'm mixing it up here. It's a, it's a good little mix. And I'm going to just add this to the tops of my pots. So the bottom portion has good drainage. I'm going to leave about an inch from, from the, the top of the, the pot. It's a lot of sand in there, a lot of grit. It's good. I'm leaving a space at the top because I want to put some saran wrap or something to add a little bit of a greenhouse, a little dome. Because lithops, when they're when they're babies, they want to be a little bit more moist. So I want to water them a little bit more often. I want to spray them from time to time. They they're not as uh, as drought tolerant as their as their parents as their big adult parents. All right. There we go. All right. Wow, this one's really uh, <laughs> really a gritty mix. Anyway, so as you can see, we've got these all topped up. And I'm going to move this off to the side. I've got my bucket of sand over here. As you can see, this is actually for the front walkway. Uh, I don't like to use salt. I like to use sand wherever possible, so that's why I bought that. I actually bought it from a garden center, uh, so it's but it's called play sand. Uh, so that's nice and dry. So what you want to do is because lithops, we'll we'll do the the lampranthus next. I'll do one one seed pack of lithops, and then I'll do the one seed pack of lampranthus, and uh, I, we don't need to do all of the pots because it'll just take too long. So I'm going to add a little bit of sand to this little pot, or, or this little holder, just a little bit. So what you want to do, you want to add the sand to here, or a little cup, a ramekin, something, and then you want to get your seeds out of the package. It's always, it's always a, a tough thing to get the seeds out. Seeds are, um, the seeds of lithops are really, really fine. So the reason why you want to use the, um, why you want to use the sand is you're going to mix the seeds with the sand and then you're going to sprinkle it on the soil surface so it evenly disperses it. If you just try to pour the seeds from the lithops out, they're going to come out in a big clump. So I don't know whether you're able to see this. Are you able to see the little dark line there? I think there's about 100 seeds in here. 150 seeds. That's them just like dust. So there we go. Let's let's open this up a little bit. Can you see in there? They're all down there in the bottom. So if you were trying to, to, to evenly spread these, it's probably not going to work very well. So you want to pour them into the sand. I can barely even see them in there. Mix them all around. Perfect. There we go. And then we're just going to take this sand and we're going to sprinkle that evenly over the surface. Perfect. Next time I could use a little bit less sand, I think. Now I'm just going to take my fingers and make sure that there's no big lumps because I want them to be able to grow through it. 
There we go. Perfect! Perfect! So now what I'm going to do, it's probably going to be good to, uh, to water these in, but I'm going to use a spray bottle and I'm just going to spray the top of the soil. I'm, and then I'm going to um, maybe put the, the, the pot itself, because it's a clay pot, I'm going to put it in some water just to um, moisturize the whole pot of soil. I don't want to water too heavily from the top because I don't want the seeds to go down into uh, deeper into the soil. I'll just use my sprayer. Anyway, we'll do that at the end of the video. Let's do... So that's, that's one thing of lithops planted. Let's put this on the top so I don't forget what it is. I have some labels. I forgot to cut them before the video. I did it with my label printer. I'll just have to cut them all and put them on little uh, spikes. So next is the Lampranthus. So when I bought when I bought the Lampranthus, I actually thought that they were lithops, but they're not. So <laughs> I get what I get. Just gonna add a little bit of sand to here. There we go. Same idea. As you can see, I just added less sand. I don't know whether you're able to see that. It looks like just sand. Lampranthus also have a very small seed, apparently. Uh, if I can get in here making it harder than it needs to be <laughs> all right so it's very similar seed size just very dust like in there oh I think these seeds are actually smaller I can see some stuck in the bottom there we go just mix them up there Woo! there you go so now we're just going to throw these on the soil surface. Evenly spread them. That's a better amount of sand. It's all just a learning curve. Hopefully, hopefully all the seeds aren't in the middle. <laughs> I want them to be all over the place. So let's put this, uh, this mix here. Uh, give me a moment, let's go get the water, and we'll spray the soil surface. Okay, so the battery died on the camera, so I <laughs> to take a few minutes to, to recharge re, uh, batteries. So I've got this um, uh, sprayer. This is what I normally use for, uh, for spraying, well, not this particular one, I've got three, uh, uh, for spraying the, um, the insecticidal soap that I make on the plants, on, under the leaves and whatnot. But uh, these are also really handy for watering your plants if you want to really find mist. Or if you have a plant that's in the back that you can't really reach, you just uh, play with the, um, the, the tightness of the, uh, the nozzle and it, makes a, uh, it goes from really fine mist to, to a spray. So you can fill up a reservoir or just water a plant really, really easily. It's really good for orchid aerial roots. Anyway, <laughs> going on. So I made sure that this is uh, really, really tight because I want to make sure that I get a nice fine mist. And uh, just moving some stuff off here. And uh, so here we go. I'm just going to spray the soil surface, letting it drain down a little bit. It was pooling a little bit. I don't want that so much. Again, I can, I can water this with a watering can, but I might end up um, moving the seeds all over the place. So I'm just going to go over this, make sure they're good and moist. Again, lift up seeds, in my experience, they want to stay a little bit more uh, moist, damp than, uh, than their parents. Uh, so I want to make sure that this stays damp until the, uh, the, the plants start to sprout. I'm going to put a piece of saran wrap on the top. So here we go. Just going to use some saran wrap. I'll need two of these. I'm just going to take this piece, put it over the top here. You can use a Ziploc bag, you can use whatever you have just to make a little greenhouse to keep the humidity in. I'm going to use a, an elastic band just because I have them and just pull it a little bit tight. There we go. So now it's clear enough that I can see in. It's lovely and I'm going to put this it's not really necessary to have a lot of light right now but I am going to put it in a bright location 
So I'm going to stick these because the, the bottom layer of this soil is is uh, is dry. I'm going to, I have off camera here, a little tray of water. I'm just going to let them soak up water um, for a couple of hours and then uh, I'll let them dry out again. Let me put this over here. So again, uh, lithops when they start to sprout they want to have nice bright light. Um, as bright as you can get, get it. Um, make sure that they're not like, well, I guess they could be in full, full sun uh, if, if you have it. Um, but uh, just shelter them maybe a little bit until they, they start to grow a little bit more. Um, you want to keep them uh, on the damp side. I don't know. After they sprout, you can start to lift the, the plastic off uh, uh, carefully. Uh, you want to just introduce the, the lower humidity uh, with time. So maybe over a period of a week, just casually lift it up a little bit more and more until it's completely gone but I will probably keep my plastic on uh, for maybe a month maybe two months if if I see a lot of little babies in there I might poke some holes in it just so that uh, it lets some air flow in um, only because some of the seeds are gonna sprout within seven days and then they'll continue to sprout for about two months and I just want to make sure that everybody has a good amount of humidity and moisture um, I don't want to just cater to the first couple that that sprout um, so anyway, we'll follow this process as they grow. Uh, sorry for the long-winded video, and uh, yeah, show me what you're growing. Maybe you're starting some lithops from seed as well. Uh, I'd love to see your progress. I'd love to see your little baby um, uh, plants. And uh, yeah, until next time, happy growing.